all right my friends hope you're doing well welcome to my channel and in this video i'm actually going to be talking about kubernetes apis basically you have a bunch of services that make up your kubernetes cluster right so you have your api server you have your scheduler controller uh, and you have your database service which is hcd database and so on so you have a bunch of services right and of course underlying these services are apis right so now you can get like a comprehensive like a full list of these apis by going to this uh, kubernetes api reference documentation right over here you can see all these api groups and whatnot or you can just come to your Kubernetes cluster and you can run a particular command, which looks like this, right? So let's take this first command and run that. Let's make this font bigger. Okay, kubectl API resources. Right, so now that will list all the API resources, all the APIs that are available in this cluster. Okay, so now let's take a look at a couple of examples. So one is the most common one, pods. So, so on, so under the name column, you see a bunch of resources or objects, Kubernetes objects. And then alongside that, you have the, the short name and then the API version, right? So API version is the main thing that we're looking at. So here it says V1 and uh, let's take another example. So for example, deployments, right? So, and then for deployments, you have apps slash V1, right? So in this case, apps is actually name of the api group okay so when you see v1 so what it means is it belongs to the core api group so core api group is basically like a legacy api group like when kubernetes was uh, first introduced actually that's what uh, they started with so it's just a way of categorizing the apis right so in fact, actually, if you go to the Kubernetes documentation, you can see clearly why API groups were introduced later. It gets basically for making it easier to extend the Kubernetes APIs, right? So, and there are two main categories. One is the core group, which only has V1. And the other one is a named group actually, where you basically have a name for the group and there is a version also. So let me show you another example of a named uh, API group. Like for example, batches actually. So the cron jobs and cron jobs, these fall under batch API group. So basically we are, we are using V1 or batch slash v1 actually okay so um let's go back to my notes so you can also run this wide like minus uh, o wide so what that will give you is basically um, on top of all these um, details basically you have sorry you have uh, another column called verb or verbs so let's take a look at that yeah verbs so that's basically all the operations that you can or actions that you can uh, take on that particular resource right so for example on the pods resource you can create it delete it uh, delete collection, get list, patch, update, and whatnot. So all these operations can be performed or all these actions can be performed on this particular resource actually, okay? 
so the next thing is so now just to make it more concrete for you right so like I'm, we're using basically this kubectl or kubectl uh, CLI right command line interface to get information about our resources to create resources and whatnot like you you might be doing the same thing actually so but if you actually run this command uh, where only this part is uh, sort of like new right like you might be aware of kubectl get pods the minus v is basically the verbose uh, flag like it will give you additional uh, information about what's going on when you run these commands for example when you run kubectl get pods minus v6 uh, you will see that uh, basically it loads the, the credentials or configuration from this particular file and then it calls a particular uh, API this particular API as I told you this is actually just the core uh, API group so that's why you don't see like a specific name for it and this is the entire path of that API right namespaces default and pods right so similarly if you try to actually get a different res resource like deployments you will see that uh, first of all i don't have any deployments in my cluster so hence uh, you're not seeing anything but we're still calling a particular api uh, endpoint and a particular path so where you can see that there is a group name for it and then there is a version uh, for that API right and then this is the entire path so you can actually use this uh, flag to get additional information about which API's are being called by your kubectl commands right and then you can go to the kubectl cheat sheet which is also available in uh, kubernetes documentation uh, where basically you can see all these uh, you know all these levels of uh, debugging that you can do um, you know for these kubectl commands actually right for example uh, v9 basically gives you not just the HTTP request information, it will also give you the response that you get from uh, these HTTP requests and uh, without truncating any of the contents actually. So uh, feel free to play with that. Okay. So now, now that you have these, um, you know, URLs, actually you can go further uh, by actually writing your own automation like in your kubernetes like you can use uh, like one of these clients like kubernetes clients like go client or python client or java client or whatever uh, the most common one is the go client or client go as it is normally called you can use these ones to actually um, write your you know custom automation programs actually for your company for your project right um, so let's actually like use just the curl to actually call some of these uh, APIs and see how it works right because that's typically what is happening in in a program actually like a certain API endpoint is called and you get a response and you know and then you know and then you work with it actually right so uh, so let's actually just take one of these APIs and then uh, will try to call it so so as you can see this is a HTTPS endpoint so whenever you see a HTTPS you you need to pass the, the certificate details and um, key details and like all these like CA certificate authority details and all that uh, or we can actually make it even more easy for us by running uh, another command called proxy command okay so you can go to 
you can you can go and run this command actually right kubectl proxy and you can put a port of your preference and uh, i'm going to run it in a different session so now we are going to be able to make calls to um, so this one is already being used so let's actually try a different port okay so now i'm going to go here and um, so I, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take this particular api uh, endpoint and then along with the entire path right and i'm just going to copy it over here i can use the private private ip that it gave me or i can just uh, change it to um, my uh, local host and it's going to be a http request and this is the complete url path all i need to do is like insert curl in front of it copy and then go to uh, my session over here while my kubectl proxy is running and then this is going to be uh, calling on port 8001 actually 8001 right so now now that gives you a response actually that basically like if you just grab the if you just grab the names so that will give you all the pod names basically right like busy box and whatnot so it gives you like a lot more information but but all this is just to prove that actually like you know it's there's nothing magical going on here so you have a bunch of apis running and kubectl is calling those apis and uh, you can actually uh, get all the details about those apis using that api resources command and then you can go to the api reference documentation get more details about those apis you can run your kubectl with uh, minus v6 uh, or basically verbose uh, flag and then you can mo get more details specifically for that particular uh, command and uh, yeah and then then using all those details you can uh, move on and write your own automation i hope that was uh, useful to you and i'm going to stop here and uh, yeah feel free to check out my kubernetes videos my kubernetes playlist i will see you guys again uh, in a different video thank you